This video then introduces the concept of an inverse matrix. So inverse matrices are what you can define is if you've got a linear transformation A which goes into the same space it started from. So here it starts and finishes in the same space. Okay. So in this case you can ask if there is a linear transformation which does exactly the opposite. Okay. So can we find a transformation A minus 1 which does which undoes let me say A so it does the opposite of A so what does that mean mathematically it means if A of V is some new vector W then A minus 1 applied to the vector W should give me the same vector V again does the opposite, right? So you can see you can rewrite this in two different ways. I can substitute this expression for v into here, and then I get that a of a minus 1, should, sorry, this expression for v into here, a minus 1 of w should be equal to w, okay? Or I can substitute this expression for w into here, and then I get that a minus 1 applied to a of v should be equal to v. And this should be true for all w and for all v. Okay, So we have these conditions on an inverse matrix. And you can write this down in the following way. This means that a times a minus 1 should be the same as the linear transformation a minus 1 times a. Okay. And as a matrix, this matrix should look like this. It should have ones going down the diagonal, however many you have, and everything else should be a zero. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So going down the diagonal here, everything is one, and everything everywhere else is zero. So why is that true? Just think about what happens. How does this matrix behave? If I multiply, let's say, just three-dimensional, multiply this matrix here by a general vector v1, v2, v3, then you can see if you multiply them, so you multiply the rows here with this, this gives me v1 plus 0, this gives me 0, v1 plus v2, this gives me 0, v1, 0, v2 plus v3. So in other words, this is the matrix which leaves every vector staying the same. Okay, So therefore, because we know that a minus 1a leaves every vector the same, and a a minus 1 leaves every vector the same, we know that the matrix here should be equal to this matrix, which leaves everything the same. So this matrix is very important, or pretty simple, but very important. It's called the identity matrix. the matrix which does nothing basically and I give it the symbol I. You'll see some other people give it the symbol E. Um, there are various different notations. Some people just give it the symbol 1. I'm going to use I in this class. Okay. Right, so we'd like to be able to find a formula for this transformation A minus 1. So next week's class I'm going to give you a, a method to kind of find a minus 1 for a general dimension. This week, to keep start things off nice and simple, I'm just going to do the two-dimensional case. So I'm going to find in two dimensions a formula for A minus 1 in terms of A. So suppose that A, that's a 2 by 2 matrix then. So it has four numbers A, B, C, and D. Okay. So we need to find A minus 1 which will multiply with A and give me. So we need to find A minus 1 such that A times A minus 1 is equal to A minus 1 times A, which is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. 
So the solution, the calculation's a little bit messy, so I'll just tell you the answer and then check it works. The solution is the following. A minus 1 should be equal to 1 over AD minus BC times DA minus B minus C. So that's the answer. And just in a minute, I'll show you that it works. Okay. So see what happens in the matrix here. The A and the D swap places. And then the B and the C are multiplied by minus 1. Okay, so how do we know this is the solution? We can check it. So I'll just check this one, and then you can check this one um, as an exercise. So A, A minus 1. This is 1 over AD minus BC times A, B, C, D times D minus B minus C, A. This is 1 over AD minus BC. Here we get AD minus BC. Here we get A minus AB plus AB. Here we get CD minus CD. And here we get minus BC plus AD. And that's it. So this is 1 over AD minus BC times AD minus BC, 0, 0, AD minus BC, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. Absolutely. Okay. So I maybe should have mentioned this. What it means if there's a number outside the matrix. I've got 2 times the matrix A, B, C, D, for example. This means you multiply everything by 2. So this is 2A, two 2B, two 2C, two 2D. Two okay. So here, this number here means you multiply everything inside the matrix by this number here. And then you get that. Okay. So I've checked that this is true. So as I said, you can also check that this is true. The calculation is very similar. Okay. So now... Just to finish, I'll give you one example and then show you an application of these inverse matrices. Okay, so let's take the matrix A, which is 4, 1, 2, 3. Okay, then A minus 1 is, so this is A, B, C, D. So that's that. And the formula for A minus 1 was 1 over A D minus B C times D A minus B minus C. So A D minus B C, that's this times this minus this times that. So that's 4 minus 6. So 1 over 4 minus 6. And then D and A, that means that these two swap over. So that's 1 and 4. These two are multiplied by minus 1. That's minus 2, minus 3. So this gives you minus 2. 1, minus 2, minus 3, 4. And you can take the factor inside, which will give you minus a half 1, 3 halves 2. Okay. So this matrix has this inverse. Okay. And if you want, you can check. Just multiply them together. So I just want to finish with an application of inverse matrices, which is going to be on the, the practice sheet this week. And this application is solving what are known as simultaneous equations. So simultaneous equations are a set of equations which you know are true at the same time using the same variables. So here's an example. Let's suppose that 2x plus y is 1 and x plus 2y is minus 4. Okay, so these are two equations. I know they're true at the same time. I want to solve them. Well, this one is actually pretty simple, so you can probably solve it without having to use matrices. But I just want to show you how you can do it using the inverse matrix. And the idea is you can write this as a matrix equation. 
I can write this as some matrix times xy should be equal to 1 minus 4. Okay. So remember that what you've got here should be this first row of the matrix times x and y. So this should be 2x plus 1y. 2x plus 1y is 1. Okay. And what you've got here is the second row of the matrix. So 1x plus 2y should be equal to minus 4. 1x plus 2y is minus 4. So this is in the form a times xy equals 1 minus 4. Okay. And now you can multiply by the inverse. a minus 1 times a of xy is equal to a minus 1 of 1 and 4. Go up to here. But then a minus 1 times a, we've said, doesn't do anything. So this means x and y should be equal to a minus 1 times 1 and 4. So therefore, if you can calculate the inverse matrix, you can use this formula to find x and y. So let's just calculate the inverse matrix. A is 2, 1, 1, 2. So a minus 1 is 1 over this times this minus this times that. So that's 4 minus 1. These swap over and these multiply minus 1. Okay. So this is a third 2 minus 1 minus 1, 2. So therefore, x, y is equal to a third 2 minus 1 minus 1, 2 times 1, 4, which is a third 2 minus 4 is minus 2, and minus 1 plus 8 is 7. So then the answer here is x is minus two-thirds and y is seven-thirds. So if you want, we can just check this is correct. So this is minus four-thirds plus seven-thirds is one. Yes. And minus... I'm missing a minus sign somewhere here. That's not right, is it? Minus two-thirds plus fourteen-thirds, that's twelve-thirds which gives me 4, not minus 4. So why if I lost Oh, I've done it here, look. I've done it there. That should be minus 4. That should be minus 4. So then this is 2 plus... Sorry. 2 plus 4 is 6. And this is minus 1. Minus 8 is minus 9. Sorry. Okay. And then that works out much nicer. Okay. So then the solution here is that x equals... 6 over 3 is 2, and y equals minus 9 over 3 is minus 3. Sorry, sorry about the mistake. So you can check that this is correct. So that's 2x is 4, minus 3 is 1, and x is 2, minus 6 is minus 4. Okay, so that works. Okay, so you may have seen from this example, this is a bit of an overkill. It's not really necessary to use inverse matrices to solve a simultaneous equation like this. Um, but next week, we're going to look at inverse matrices in higher dimensions, and then you can solve simultaneous equations with three or four or five equations here when it does get quite complicated. Okay. Right, so that's an application of inverse matrices. I just want to finish with some properties of the inverse matrix which are important. So I won't prove these but they're not difficult to show to be true. So the first one is suppose I have two matrices and I multiply them together and then I want to find the inverse of that and this you can show is equal to the inverse of the first one times the inverse of the second one but the order swaps around okay so if it's b times a here then the inverse is, is a inverse times B inverse. Okay. That's not difficult to prove, by the way, because, for example, what does this mean? We need to show that B A times B sorry times B A minus one should be equal to the identity, right? But then using this, this is B times A times A minus one times B minus one, but this is equal to the identity. So this is B times B minus one, but this is again inverse, so this is equal to identity, and so on. 
So that's the first property. And the second property I want to show is about this thing on the bottom. So a minus 1 was 1 over a d minus b c d a minus b minus c. Now what happens if this is 0? If a d minus b c equals 0, what happens? Well in this case there is no inverse. So if this is true then a minus 1 does not exist. So it's not always possible to find the inverse matrix and in particular if AD minus BC is 0 then it's not possible to find the inverse matrix. So therefore the value of this thing AD minus BC is quite important and this is called the determinant of A. So we define determinant of A as is written this way, DETA, and in two dimensions it's defined to have this value, AD minus BC. Okay. So what this second property says is that the inverse only exists if the determinant is not equal to zero. Okay. So that's all I want to say on the properties of inverse matrices. The final video this week is going to talk a bit more about what this determinant means.